very beginning, enmity, adversity. Enmity is put between the seed of the woman and the seed of the man. But this man was different than Adam. This man wasn't Adam, the serpent, they called him. He wasn't Adam. But Adam was mortal. He had a, a limited lifespan. But whoever this was that was talking to so-called Eve had to be here with God when God created, in order to know God was lying to Eve and Adam when he said the very day you eat off that tree, your ass gonna drop dead. The very day, not the next day. Now the church like to clean it up and tell y'all a bunch of bullshit about all oh, in Adam died. No, his heart was still pumping, that's in him, and his liver was still functioning, and that's in him. And his kidneys were still functioning, and that's in him. And his brain was still functioning, and that's in him. So all that was in Adam did not die. It did not die. That's some bullshit. That's some um, um, Nicene doctrine to keep your mind trapped in the in the game. So we're going to go all the way through it. I want y'all to understand what the fallen ones were and what's the difference. Now, when you get to understand that in order for it to be a uh, enmity, an adversity between the seed of the one they call the serpent and the seed of the woman, or they, they had to manifest. So where is the conflict at? So you saying the serpent got babies? Did the serpent have children before Eve, with Eve, or after Eve, or all of the three, or one of the two, or two of the five, or what? How did he do it? They don't never tell us because. If they only give you enough information to let your mind run wild, they can throw anything out there and it'll get your attention and that's what you'll focus on. So that's called misdirection. And all of these religious doctrines is heavily contingent upon misdirection. So all I'm doing is saying that's misdirection. Don't just pay attention to that. Look at this too. That's all I'm going to do. And then as you begin to see it, begin to make sense to you then you starting to see through what they call the veil well what is the veil um in religious texts they talk about spiritual vision versus physical vision what you see in the world around you has more than one meaning more than one layer um trees got auras curly in photography proves it humans got auras Things got auras. Everything has a signature of energy. So in reading these energy signatures, you realize that everything should be able to communicate. Right? But this means everything is breathing and living. So let me point out something on the sidebar for the vegans. Say we don't eat meat. We don't eat uh, animals because we don't believe in killing them. Everything that y'all use as an objection to eat meat of any form is the same objection a meteor can use for you to stop eating veggie, veggies. Veggies are sentient. They live in. They communicate. They vibrate. They send signatures of energy to one another like we talk. And when we get to going into our... Um, self-righteous mode of uh recovering from the brain damage that we was under because that's the best way to describe it is brain damage our brain was damaged we was thinking um we was not in our right mind we was in somebody else's mind it's just like what malcolm said and what Kali said stole our culture stole our minds now <clears throat> if I eat, say, fish. Another person eat chicken, but they don't eat beef or fish. And another person eat beef, but they don't eat pork or chicken. These people are on a different level of vibration. <clears throat> Do it mean one of them better than the other one? No. Do it mean one of them worse than the other one? No. All it means is that at this point in their spiritual development, in their physical development, the 
the I meets here. So you have one person that have more seemingly benefits doing eating por pork, beef, all of the stuff we say not good. And it looked like to us, the naked eye, that there's no way with a diet like that, that they should be able to manifest um, so smoothly and effectively. Well, coming to find out, it got nothing to do with what he eat. He's eating the diet according to the vibrations of the physical form. He's not eating the diet according to his spiritual vibration. The physical form and the spiritual form sometimes conflict about diet. And this is what you call um, like food allergies. <clears throat> your spirit body and your physical body don't agree. It's a reaction, right? So when the self-righteous people start talking vegan talk, well, half of them, or the majority of them, I got to remind them, you didn't feel that way when you were a carnivore, you know. And even when you were a carnivore, you looked at vegans as something was wrong with them. Now that you became a vegan and you're looking at, so what did you do? You took your meat-eating prejudice and converted it into a vegetarian prejudice. All you did was made that shit kosher. I hate you kosherly now. So we had to realize that on our path to self-development, everybody not on the same level and everybody diet shouldn't be the same. Everybody nutritional value, not the same. Everybody um, level of understanding, not the same. Everybody ability to communicate across various boundaries are not the same. So when you're expecting a cookie cutter, then you need a cookie cutter concept of creation something that you can just put in the box and pass it off as the truth without nobody addressing it so they put it in a book and gave it to you so now i gotta go through the book and show you the game some of the games can't show you all of them it's been here for days so <clears throat> already before the sons of god saw the daughters of man we got a problem with seeds now, the word for seed in the Hebrew that they're using there turns out to be the same word that they use for, like, um, blood. The reference or the indication is the seed is something that's in the blood. The seed is something in the blood. So if it's something in the blood, then where's the conflict? Now, go to W.E.B. Du Bois um souls of black folks and he have a section in there called the warring soul and he's talking about two different personalities struggling to become manifest in itself he called it my white self and my black self but that's not really what it's, it's more like it's your um your demon self hate self versus your angelic self-love so that's more according to what it is that you read but we can use Du Bois for a reference for, for several reasons. He's one of the ancestors. Um, he wrote it with beautiful poetic expression, simplicity of comprehension, and sincerity of heart. That made it a holy text right there. That part of it made it a religious. So that had to be extracted from the souls of black folks and put as a separate book for the new because you got to understand what's going on inside you in order to be able to overcome the obstacles outside you. So here we go. So now you got this worn factions in the self. So this is what comes when the serpent so-called deceived Eve and the enmity is in the seed and the seed is the blood. Well, what blood? Well, traditionally, before several uh, cleanup attempts, in which we finally got this thing under wraps on this planet. The uh, conflict in the blood was RH positive, RH negative, due to the breeding program that the majority of the beings that they was creating um, didn't have a RH factor, but they still had um, Reese's DNA code in the DNA that caused a conflict in the genes. Then you had them um, with the negative factor, 
which was no RH factor, which came from those saurians that look like, we call them reptilians. When you want to see what they looked at like in their true form, all you have to do is look for a disorder in um, health called ichthyosis, uh, which they translate to mean lizard skin. Um, and the ichthyosis is named after an ancient fish called an ichthyosaur um, that they thought was extinct and recently discovered three of them or two of them in South Africa fishing. And they like 60 million year old extinct fish. Anyway, so this disorder, this, this is the genes manifesting in the physical from the blood. Now, what most people not understanding, they're looking at it only as a religious book. They're not putting any scientific view to any of this what's taking place. But what's taking place is people became volatile in the mixing of reptiles with mammals. The monkey mind being erratic and unstable mixed with the reptile nature made for a very, very powerful, dangerous being to be produced without a balancing mechanism. So <clears throat> we had to figure out in science, how do you balance the nature of a reptile and a mammal when the reptile has a selfish and greedy disposition in nature because it's a long solitary creature. And then you got this mammal, this um, matriarchal pack related family oriented creature that, that's an automatic conflict right there now based off the percentage now if you remember in the quran they say and allah gave you a portion which seemed good unto himself what they just told you was is everybody born didn't originally have the same amount of animal mammal versus animal reptile DNA in order to keep them in balance. This imbalance itself, meaning that we had different portions. Well, how did the portions become different? It's the cooking process, and this is why they say Allah or God, providence, gave you the portion which seemed good because over the process of it, what we were supposed to be doing in human form was learning. What were we learning? How to balance reptile, selfish greed, seven deadly sins with the mammalian seven holy virtues without taking the selfishness and the greed and the self-centeredness of the reptile mixing it with the erratic and insanity of the monkey mind when you put them two together and they unrestricted it's chaos so that's why you looking around and you see out of out of chaos comes order order from chaos they're always talking about that and never telling you what they're talking about because they allow your mind to run rampant on its own and never give you clarification. And so the monkey mind um, being erratic, and this is what you needed a Masonic Lodge for. You needed somebody that knew how to make a man be a man without embracing all of those negative traits of both mammal and reptile, which would make him what we would call the absolute devil. The absolute devil at that point. And it wouldn't matter what color he was. So um, he would be just pure wicked because he would not have any control over the selfishness and the greed and the monkey mind of having making some of the most erratic decisions you could think of because it's raw enough, he'll just do it at the spur of the moment, without cause or rationale, it won't make sense. But he'll do it out of the place of the reptilian nature. So now, is there anywhere in the body we can find any of this information outside of the biblical text? Yeah. When you look at the brain itself, you have a three-part brain. You have what they call your reptilian brain, which primarily consists of the stem, which is responsible for your waking consciousness. Then you have your next brain, which they call your old mammal brain or old mammalian brain or mid brain. And then you have your uh, what they call greater brain, your great 
um, lobe of the cerebrum that they call the the new um, mammalian brain. Now, here's the problem already. We got an old mammalian brain and a new mammalian brain. What happened? What made the old mammalian brain so obsolete that we needed a whole new one on top of that one? What was wrong with the processing mechanisms taking place within the psychology that make you need a whole nother type of brain added to the two? You already got two brains. Why you need a third one? So now we starting to get toward what's going on in the blood when they separate us, when the enmity is there. So women <clears throat> have a natural antibiotic in their vaginal secretions for Y chromosomes. If women and men are natural mates, why is this present? Why does a woman's um, body reject the male fetus once it's in there 70% of the time? And why is the odds of producing um, a female three times more likely than producing a male? Nobody asks these questions because it's not haphazard. So that in order to maintain control, there's a couple things that has to be done. First, you have to be denied knowledge yourself. And when I say knowledge yourself, I don't mean somebody telling you to look in the mirror and say you God and that's it. Go home about your day. That's some bullshit. Knowledge yourself is how your body works. How do my physical body and my spirit body interact? This is knowledge yourself. When I learn how my physical body and my spiritual body interact, what is the effect that this have on my psychology, my mind power, my brain? Once I get that figured out, now I'm in a whole nother spectrum of information. I'm, I done went from, from anatomy to psychology to spirit science, and now I gotta mesh all of it together. Now I gotta be somewhere in physics. Once I get done with physics, I got to go to something called quantum physics, quantum mechanics. And once I get done with that, then I can start trying to figure out what I really am. So in, in simplified form, what we are is a earthborn star seeds. So when I say earthborn, that means because we born here in physical earth based bodies. An earth-based body is composed of 21 complex amino acids. These amino acids make up your DNA. And your DNA serves as the central command center and the center of a cell that draws in an electromagnetic current on the outside of your cell, what they call uh, your membrane or meme brain. The membrane is the antenna receiver that translates the radio signal that you call the self into the DNA and tell the DNA in what order does the binary encoding information need to fire in order to have the effect to produce the personality that you're looking at. But I don't supposed to know that because I'm supposed to be crazy and an idiot and don't know shit. Now, this has always been known in Buddhism, Hinduism, the Far Eastern religions and African indigenous religions, but the Western world, primary contingent on what they call the monotheistic religions of Judaism and Christianity and Islam, that information is still available, but the restrictions that the priesthood put on the practitioner for discovering the deception. They don't want to be exposed. Don't no preacher want to go in the church and all of the people looking at him sideways because he's been knowing 30, 40 years he's been teaching that Jesus is ISIS. Jesus is a woman. Jesus is the queen of heaven and earth. And the son of man is her son that they call the son of man out of mockery. And soon as y'all know that, and y'all have, you got to explain this, Reverend, how you knew the truth all this time 
that we've been waiting. Lucifer is a woman. Lucifer and Jesus the same. And it's a woman on top of 